Hello, I hope you are well. My name is Adam with cloudautomation.blog. In this video, we're gonna go over how to extend the functionality around Azure in VRA, in vRealize Automation. So after you've configured your Azure endpoint, which we're not gonna go over that here, but I'll leave a link in my blog to a really good blog post on how to do that. But once it's configured, what you're gonna see in your X as a service blueprints is this Azure machine. If you'll notice real quick, you can't edit, copy, publish, delete it, etc., which is a problem if you want to extend the functionality within VRO. So if I click over on items real quick and I click this Azure component, you'll see what a provisioned Azure VM looks like and the information that it gives you. So ID, name, display name, network interfaces, location, some really good information, but also some information that really isn't all that useful. And it's kind of all just jammed together on this screen. The value of VRA, of vRealize Automation, as a portal that someone can go request Azure resources. They can go request AWS resources. They can go request on-premises resources is that not only can they request them, they can also see what they're doing. They can also modify them. It's the full life cycle. If they wanted to reboot this box, if they wanted to see some additional information, if they wanted to add a data disk, if they wanted to add a tag or even just see the tags that are applied to it, how do you do that? And that's really what I'm gonna focus on here and how actually the, the very first step of going down that path. So going back to the design tab, if I go over to the X as a service blueprints, again, you'll see this is the blueprint that we're gonna use. This is the blueprint also that we could use within the Canvas designer. The problem here is this blueprint, I'm gonna jump over to vRealize Orchestrator or VRO. The problem with that blueprint is it, it directly references these four workflows. So allocate Azure VM, create the VM, deallocate and delete. Obviously the first two would be during a provisioning and the last two would be, de would be during the deprovisioning process. So let's say you wanted to edit this workflow. You wanted to add you know, a change controller. You wanted to add, hey, go get me an IP address because I'm statically assigning them within Azure. I just want to record that DNS entry on-prem. Whatever the case may be, I want to do something. You go to click this pencil. Oh, you cannot. So not only is it locked down in VRA, it's also locked down in VRO. So how do we get around that? So in VRO, what you're going to want to do is copy all four of those workflows. Literally just right click and duplicate workflow. And what you're gonna get is four workflows that I named mine exactly the same. I just added dash advance to the end. And for right now, we are done in VRO. That's all we need to do is just copy those four workflows to your own folder. I have mine under Scratch, Azure, and then Helpers. And now what we're gonna do is go back to vRealize Automation. What we're going to do is go to Design, go to X as a Service, Go to X as a service blueprints. And again, we're going to see that Azure machine blueprint. And this is the one that I've already created. But what we're going to do here is create a new one. So click new, go to orchestrator and locate those workflows that you just copied. So again, scratch, Azure, helpers, and select the create Azure virtual machine. Do not select the allocate. Even though the allocate is the first one that is executed when you kick off an Azure build, what we want to select here is the create Azure virtual machine. So select that, click next. Name it, add a description. If you want to add a version, uh, you can. Click Next. You can leave all of this stock out of the box how it is. We can customize this later. Click Next. You're going to want to click under the provision re resource. Click the Virtual Machine, Azure Virtual Machine. Click Next. And then the Component Lifecycle. This is, this is key. This is why and where it called those VRO workflows. For right now, we're just going to leave it alone. You could add an update and a destroy, but for right now, we're not going to. So click finish. And then click back into that, that new X as a service blueprint we just created. And if we go over to component lifecycle, you'll, you'll notice there's some additional boxes here. The allocate workflow. If you click the little plus next to it, go to orchestrator, locate that same workflow that you copied. So scratch, Azure, helpers, allocate. Submit and do the exact same thing for the destroy and the deallocation. The reason we selected the Crete Azure Virtual Machine is because that's the base VRO workflow that this X as a service uses and it cannot be modified. If you notice, I can't actually change this one. The one we just said, I can delete that, I can edit it. Um, the destroy and the deallocate, you can do the same thing. The only one we don't use here is the update workflow. Out of the box, we do not use the update workflow. And then you can set a category if you would like click finish and you are done. What that allows you to do now, so let's say there were steps that you needed to do before a VM was actually stood up, such as get an IP address, create an AD object, create a change control, 
do th- you know all of those things you need to do before you stand up a VM in an enterprise environment or in any type of real business environment? What you could do is you could create a wrapper workflow. Yeah. Uh, now, now what that is is it's a it's a workflow of workflows more or less. So you could create a wrapper workflow in this directory, reference the allocate virtual machine directory. So it's still going to execute the allocate VM direct uh, full, a workflow, but it's going to do all of those other things I mentioned. Go get an IP address, create the DNS record. It's going to create the AD object based off of a name. And maybe actually, yeah, I just mentioned the name. Um, it's it's a tag within Azure, but maybe you still actually want to assign it a is what we would think of as a, as a host name um, internally. So create that host name, and that's what will ref- be added to the the AD account and as well as the front of the FQDN. So all of those you know those four separate workflows, including the allocate Azure VM would all be sub workflows within this main wrapper workflow. Then what you would do with that new wrapper workflow, let's say it was called wrapper, you know, um, allocate Azure VM rather than what we're looking at right here. You would take that allocate Azure VM workflow. We'd go back to VRA and under the X as a service blueprints, you would click that X as a service blueprint you created. You'd go back to component lifecycle and you would change the allocate workflow. So you'd click your little plus and actually in the case of one already being there, I'll just walk through what that would look like real quick. Helpers, allocate, submit, finish. So what you do is you click that X as a service blueprint that you created, go over to component lifecycle, click the pencil, and then change the workflow to your new wrapper workflow. So scratch, Azure, wrapper, and then whatever that wrapper workflow that included not only the allocate Azure VM workflow, but other workflows as well. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to comment on the blog or my video. Thank you and have a great day.